Come on in, pull up a chair, and take a load off, because today I'm going to share my final word on the Dungeons & Dragons open game license fiasco. But first, welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Before I dive in, I do want to point out none of this is scripted. It's all off the cuff. So if I mistakenly make reference to these proposed open game licenses, I do apologize right up front because I am certainly not looking to intentionally mislead anyone. That said, you may have caught my video from a couple weeks ago where I shared my thoughts on the leaked open game license 1.1 for Dungeons and Dragons. Since then, I've gotten a lot of emails and DMs asking, where's the rest of your coverage around OGL 1.1? Why aren't you covering this open game license nonsense? Reality is, I have. I've just been talking about it on my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch. And truthfully, it's not like I've been going into big, long, detailed rants about it either. I just kind of talked about some of the developments that we've seen surrounding the whole fallout from OGL 1.1. The reason why I really haven't uploaded another standalone video is because we hadn't seen any concrete details about what changes might have been made to the proposed Open Game License 1.1 till now. Now, of course, we did get that ridiculous response from Wizards of the Coast by way of D&D Beyond, but all that really told us was Wizards of the Coast had rolled a critical failure, and you know that 1.1 we rolled out there, that was just a draft. That wasn't the finished product alongside a lot of other falsehoods. And that response also had a lot of gaslighting aimed at the D&D community. So, of course, we saw how well Wizards of the Coast's announcement by way of D&D Beyond went with the public. Not well at all. But still, it didn't contain any updates on what the proposed new open game license was going to be. Now we have seen some concrete developments. So I do want to point out, I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty and all the minutia surrounding the open game license in D&D. If you want all that detail, then by all means, I certainly recommend that you check out the Rules Lawyers YouTube channel because he's been sharing open game license videos and discussing the possible impact these proposed open game licenses the changes, at least, would have on third-party content creators. Also, No Nat Ones, on their YouTube channel, they've been sharing open game license videos, coming more from the perspective of a gamer as opposed to addressing the legalese. But both of those channels have been sharing really good open game license videos. Full disclosure, both those channels do promote Pathfinder 2nd Edition from Paizo Inc., now, I don't believe that that fact has colored their coverage in any way, but I do want to mention that. Plus, if you're not overly familiar with the gaming gang, I also share news and reviews of Pathfinder 2nd Edition from Paizo Inc. alongside a ton of other tabletop role-playing games and publishers, including Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and & Dragons. Just so you know, the more you know, right? So some of the things that have kind of stuck out about this proposed open game license, I believe they want to call it 1.2 now, is first off, I found it very interesting that Wizards of the Coast is proposing taking the mechanics of Dungeons and & Dragons and making them creative commons. Which I know a lot of people out there are going to say, hey, you know what? You already can't copyright game rules. Can't copyright game mechanics. Well, that is true, but I guarantee if Open Game License 1.1 had gone into effect, we would have seen some lawsuits, and we don't know where a judge would come down in a court of law. But for argument's sake, we'll say it is true you can't copyright game rules, game mechanics. Regardless, I still like the fact that Wizards of the Coast is saying, well, we're going to make this Creative Commons and it'll be overseen by some impartial third party 
just like the open RPG license that, or ORC, as people are referring to it, uh, that is proposed by Paizo Inc., and which has a ton of publishers on board for. I got to say, I was very excited to see so many tabletop gaming publishers out there flex a bit of muscle and their independence. Very happy to see that. And I truly believe this is going to lead to a new wave of excitement surrounding tabletop role-playing games. I really, really do. We've also seen that hostile attitude and hostile language towards third-party content creators rolled back. So under the proposed Open Game License 1.1, there's a lot of uh, a lot of verbiage in there talking about how a creator didn't really own their content, and depending on how much money they were making from what they were selling, Wizards of the Coast come along and get a royalty, and they could s just swoop in and scoop up the IP and sell it royalty-free. A lot of bad mojo going on in that portion of the open game license. All that has been rolled back. That has been removed for Open Game License 1.2. I know there were people out there who make podcasts and videos regarding Dungeons & Dragons who were concerned. I never was because I understand fair use. So not much Wizards of the Coast could do to me because, I, like I said, I understand fair use. And as a side note, if you are a content creator and you're covering an IP that you don't own, I certainly recommend learn about fair use because you don't want to get bullied into a corner that you shouldn't be put in in the first place. All right, I digress. Anyway, the verbiage in this open game license 1.2 is far, far friendlier to video and podcast creators and, and essentially says, we're not going to come and try to get any of your profits, any of your monetization you might get. So it's very nice to see that as well. Now, there are some things that aren't exactly friendly to creators of virtual tabletop content, which makes absolute sense. Because we already know Wizards of the Coast, by way of Hasbro, has indicated they want to monetize Dungeons and Dragons far better than it ever has in the past. And one of the best ways to do that is to try to put as much as they can from D&D online behind a paywall. So I personally believe that the end game with D&D Beyond is to morph it into a virtual tabletop and to be able to have an exclusive home for D&D players to go online to play Dungeons and Dragons. I think that's what's in the cards. So of course, the open game license is not going to be very friendly to virtual tabletop creators and other virtual tabletops, period. From my understanding, I think Foundry has been trying to get on board with Wizards of the Coast for like an official like rules pack, and Wizards of the Coast wants nothing to do with it. I don't know if that's still the case. That's what I've heard in the past. So like I said, I am not shocked to see this open game license 1.2 try to freeze out virtual tabletop creators. So that's unfortunate there. Overall, I think it is some positive movement, positive for the community and the hobby as far as this, as this open game license 1.2. And I do want to say we can really thank those people out there who canceled their D&D &D Beyond subscriptions for this positive movement. Because people like me did not change the needle one iota. Other people out there publicly speaking out against the proposed open game license 1.1 did not move the needle. Who did move the needle are those people out there who said, uh, you know what, I'm going to take my money back. I'm going to cancel my su subscription. Now, I don't know the official numbers, but I had heard it was in excess of 1 million subscribers who canceled their D&D Beyond subscriptions. And we do live in a world where money talks, 
and bullshit walks. And gamers out there stood by their principles and said, you know what? I'm taking my money back. You can't have it anymore. And that woke up Hasbro. And when I talk about Wizards of the Coast in a negative light, you know I'm not talking about the creatives. I am not. I've said it before. I know for a fact Jeremy Crawford's not sitting there going, <laughs> money, 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 money. <laughs> I understand quite a lot of the creatives at Wizards of the Coast have been very upset by all of this going on as well. So please keep that in mind. If I make negative reference to Wizards of the Coast, it's the sea level folks, the bean counters, not the people who are in the trenches creating Dungeons and Dragons. So it's important for you to keep that in mind. But I am very happy to see a far less hostile proposed open game license. Now, does this take everybody out of the woods? No. Because we know what Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro want to see happen. In a perfect world for them, they'll be able to reach into a D&D &D player's wallet or purse on a monthly basis and pull out maybe $30, $35. That is what they want to achieve. Now, depending how you feel about that is completely up to you. If you're upset about that, well, then you might want to look at another role-playing game or publisher to invest your time, energy, and money into. If you have no problem with that, which, like I said before, we're talking about corporations. Corporations want to make money. Anybody publishing a tabletop role-playing game, big or small, wants to make money. But if you have no issue with that outlay every month, then by all means, continue playing D&D. Now, as I mentioned in the open, this is a fiasco surrounding the open game license for Dungeons and & Dragons. And I mean that on multiple levels, not just Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro and Dungeons and & Dragons. This has been kind of disappointing, kind of disheartening, kind of frustrating to see, especially the number of outlets who saw how many views open game license videos were getting. And they, of course, wanted to jump on board because it's views, right? Now, one thing I am proud of, I've been covering the hobby for more than 13 years now. I've always been proud of the fact that I never resort to clickbait. On thegaminggang.com, you will never see an article, 10 ways elves are sexier than halflings. You won't see me create a video titled, You Won't Believe What Dungeons & Dragons Weapon Is Replacing the Vorpal Sword. Or anything along those lines. It's just not my style. I'm not looking to artificially inflate the number of views that my website gets or videos on this channel get. I know, I'm a small outlet. I have no beef with that. I'm cool. I was disappointed to see some outlets out there who I respect, who I enjoy their content, suddenly releasing three or more videos a day about the open game license and not actually presenting any new information and, worse yet, taking rumor and presenting it as fact. That was very disheartening to see. And I get it. I understand. I saw the number of views that just my thoughts on the open game license that video got. I was like, wow, holy cow. And then, of course, I threw away the line saying, hey, I could name 20 fantasy tabletop role-playing games off the top of my head that you would enjoy playing just as much as D&D. And then, of course, people commented, hey, Jeff, how about sharing that list? So I shared a video of 29 fantasy role-playing games. And I was like, holy cow, that's getting a lot of views. So I get it. I understand the appeal, especially for an outlet that, you know, maybe your videos get a few hundred views, a few thousand views, and then suddenly you do an open game license video, and you've got 50,000 views on that video. And then you do another video. 
and that gets 50,000 views. I understand the temptation. Problem I had is when it provided absolutely no new information to the public, and like I said, worse yet, pawning off rumor or just pulling things out of their ass and saying, hey, this is what's going to happen. And of course, that wasn't the case. Very disappointing to see that. So that's kind of unfortunate. And like I said, once again, I could honestly see where the temptation would be. Like, wow, we got to crank out a bunch of videos. But then we'd see silly things like, Stay tuned for our live stream as we've got somebody who's got nothing to do with Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, Dungeons and Dragons, tabletop role-playing games, open game licenses, or Creative Commons. They're coming up next. We're going to talk open game license. Or you'd see outlets who had absolutely nothing to do with role-playing games or even tabletop gaming suddenly releasing these open game license videos. It's like... Next on the Home and Garden Club, we're going to talk open game license. And then, following that, the five best roses to plant for spring. It's like, what? So hopefully we will see all of that nonsense start to blow over. Because I don't know about you, I am really, really tired of seeing these same open game license videos popping up in my suggested or recommended videos. And it's like, wait a second, they're doing another open game license video today. To wrap up, I mentioned this before that our hobbies should not upset us, make us feel disrespected, piss us off. Our hobby is all about having a good time, enjoying ourselves, experiencing and engaging our imaginations and having a great time with our friends around the game table. And hopefully we are now getting back towards that now that the powers that be over at Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro might be coming to their senses. Fingers crossed. Oh, my fingers are crossed. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this rant. It will also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit TheGamingGang.com for all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day to check out this video. And until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay. You don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here or take a peek at the latest live stream or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.